Greetings, Greg back here with another video helping you become a professional game developer in record time by creating your very first idle game. Uh, in the previous uh, video in this series, uh, we created our first C-sharp script. We started implementing gold. And so when you click on this guy, uh, we, we have a, a gold variable going up. Remember always, before I keep going, please click like, please click subscribe, uh, and also uh, check out the links below. I have a, a, a value discount on this uh, course I'm creating. Uh, you might want to go back and look at, at the very first introduction if you have any questions about it. But um, for a limited time, as I'm building this course here on YouTube, which is the first for me, I've never built a course live on YouTube before. But as I'm building this up here on YouTube, I'm um, offering all of my courses, like all 12 of my game courses, for free with the purchase of this new uh, idle game, which is also includes a full um, ebook that's getting uh, created for the game. So you're going to have a, a nice uh, ebook uh, to follow along with the course. And it, it really is the culmination of me building uh, games for a, a lot of years now and, and building courses for a lot of years. So um, there should be a lot of really good uh, knowledge coming out of this course. And to, re to remind everyone, this is not the course. This is the building of the course. There's gonna be lots of editing. There's gonna be changes. Um, I'm gonna reword things. This is how I go about the walkthrough of building a course that is going to be uh, hopefully a definitive uh, course in, in how you uh, learn Unity by creating a game. So let's go ahead and keep going. We have a enemy script, but the gold isn't updating. So just to review really quickly what we have working here now when we run our game is uh, if we select our enemy game object and come down, we can watch the variable now. Notice gold is zero. And when I click on this guy, gold keeps going up, 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 up. It's at 22 now. But the thing to, to, to point out is we, we haven't set up updating the gold on the screen yet. So let's do that now. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is come in here to our script and give a place to hold text, but hold that text object. Because if we're gonna change it or modify it or do anything with any object within a script, we have to get what they call a reference to it. We gotta get a reference to that script, a reference to that object in this case. So I'm gonna say public text mesh pro is why I start typing. And this is the one we want for text mesh pro. So someday Unity might make our lives easier and build Text Mesh Pro in and just create it as a text game object. Probably won't happen for backward compatibility purposes, but this is what the real name of that object is. And I can just call this now gold text, like so. It's a sign, but its value is never used. Well, it's being used right here. It's lying to us. Maybe it's because this script isn't getting called. That's why it doesn't know that this script is getting called by that button click. So that's why it thinks this never gets used. Now, what we wanna do is after we increment gold, we wanna update the text on the screen. And we can do that really simply by typing gold text dot text. Now this dot notation is what it's letting us do if you're not familiar with it, is when we reference an object like gold text that's sitting out there, we, you know, in our scene, when I hit the dot, it gives us all the properties on that object. And we can see a lot of these properties in the inspector. So if I click here, you can see there's a color property, for example. Well, that matches here in the text. See, we have this, well, not that text, this text. <laughs> but you'll see here, we have a vertex color here. And so this is gonna give us, and when we change this, that would change the color um, here. So that's how we represent that. But you'll see there's font styles, there's font sizes, auto size, that kind of thing. If I click this auto size, notice that we see auto size text container. So if I, I could actually manipulate that property. Well, the property we want to manipulate is text. Then that is right here, the text input. So that's what we're, we're manipulating. And we want to make it equal to gold. Now, if I say just equal to gold, that doesn't work. And you get this red line, so we mouse over it, and it says cannot convert source type int to target type string. 
and these are in the glossary in the in the book um, if you have the book but an integer is whole numbers and strings are characters and letters are literally any character number symbol enclosed within quotes and so this doesn't count for that so let me make a string gold and put it in quotes like that and so this is how you represent a string in in um, C sharp and when I hit the plus meaning I want to add gold on to it notice the red line goes away and it's just gonna put gold on the end of our string and it's because the C sharp compiler compiler is another word in the glossary of the book um, it basically knows when it sees this text string when it sees this string that it should automatically convert this integer into a string and stick it inside a gold.txt. So we'll save this, and I don't have to save manually. It'll auto save when I switch back to Unity so we can recompile. And we got an error for a second. Oh, it's gone. It looked like it didn't see my semicolon for a second. Um, so now if we run the game, it still would not work. And um, actually, let me show you that. I'm going to run it. Nothing will happen until we click because that's what's going to fire off the on click method in that in that script. So I click and notice I get this error. Null reference exception, object reference not set to an instance of an object. This will be the most common error you get in Unity. Particularly the first you know, few months, uh, your, your first hours in it. You're, you are going to get this a lot. And it's because we have not specified here in our script. Um, we said we're, we have a gold text placeholder. Like we've set aside a, a variable to hold a reference to our text on screen. Um, and then down here, we're referencing gold text and we're trying to specify that we want to put and modify it. But the problem is we never in the game told Unity how to assign the text object we want to this variable. And that'll be really clear when we look at it right here. So we'll stop running it because it's broke the way it is. And if we come and we find our enemy script, I can make it easier to find by like um, collapsing some of that. But you'll see here that gold text we never told it here in the inspector what text object to use. It just says none. And so this null reference exception object reference not set to an instance of an object, that is what you're going to be looking for when you see that error with this design pattern is that we set up a, an object in our script, defined a variable for it. We then actually wrote a, a, a command statement, an actual line of code that manipulates this game object, but there's none there. So we get this null reference exception. Null is the same as none. There's just nothing there. So we fix that easily by just dragging our gold text in there. Now you'll see when you're looking through the inspector that gold text is no longer none, that it's referring specifically to this game object right here. So when we run it, we're gonna have the result we expect gold is zero well we don't get that result but we will as we click it up you see our gold going up every time we click we get another one now why is it when we run it the first time got those little funky brackets around it well i did those funky brackets on purpose because if i didn't have them there i would be under the impression like if i had just put the zero here that it was not said in the editor or that the the script was handling it when i see this i know that my script is not doing what it needs to do to basically initialize this screen object for gold so that's very simple to solve by adding back in our start method so i'll say void start like that and we'll just copy this for now paste it in there like that save which i didn't have to do but it's a habit and jump back over into our unity here as it does this little compile thing and um now when we run it it's going to say gold zero and it's going to take those bra brackets off because it's literally just following my script now and we have 
our first little idle clicker functional uh, game where we can click on this guy and have gold just keep going up, 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 and up. So I think that's probably a good place to stop this lecture. I'm shortening them up a little bit. I want, want it to be in bite-sized components for people so they can skip to what they need and not watch like a two-hour one video lecture. So uh, in the next video, we're going to keep building on our patterns and uh, learning how we can upgrade our idle game. Now, as a reminder, because this course is in development, you're watching me actually build this course here right now um, on, uh, live. I'm going to make uh, this course available uh, at, a, at a substantial discount so that you can pre-purchase it now. And as a super big bonus, I'm actually giving away all 12 of my uh, game courses for, for free if you purchase uh, pre-purchase this course. So it's a great opportunity to, to get all of my game courses at, at a ridiculously low price and help support uh, the creation of this course. And of course, then you get this course as well, um, the video component along with this um, book that um, this this book that's getting created, this ebook. It'll have a step-by-step walkthrough, so if you like, you can have it to look at and go through while you're while you're learning by the video. Now, with that said, I'm gonna let you go. And when we get back in the next lecture, we'll keep slamming away, keep building this up until we have a very functional idle game.